How's it going guys? Lunchbox here. We're gonna do a video today about breeding. Uh, we're gonna do uh, breeding, imprinting, um, basically anything, uh, an intro to how to breed. It's not gonna be anything on specifics, specific values, things like that. Uh, as there's, it goes very in depth, it's a uh, very intricate uh, system that they have that uh, is different from what you might be playing if, uh, for example, this is a modded server. The breeding intervals are different. Uh, so everything might be a little different for you. This is just gonna give you a uh, broad uh, idea on how this works. Uh, so you guys can get started if you guys don't know how. So, uh, again, thanks for joining me. I have my little buddy here on my shoulder, oddly enough named Little Buddy. This is my base here. As you can see, we've gotten started with the breeding already. Uh, I actually have a uh, few Rexes already uh, growing up uh, right behind me here. I'm going to go ahead and show you that real quick, and then we'll get into the specifics. So, we have a whole bunch of little baby. Well, not so baby anymore. I believe they're in the juvenile, yep, juvenile stage. So, this is going to be kind of what's going to end up happening uh, here, but let me show you how I got to this point here. I'll bring you right back. Alright, so uh, again, so we are uh, playing modded. So we do have S+, Plus. we have automated ARC, we have um, CFK, right there, the Castles and Keeps mod. We have Steampunk off there in the distance there. Um, it's a pretty high, uh, highly modded server. Rates are increased. We do have uh, specific things that make breeding a little bit easier to, to work with here. Uh, breeding in general, it's going to be the same idea though. So to start off with, and a lot of people are going to ask, what is this? If you only play vanilla, uh, this is a hitching post. It allows you to connect the Rex or whatever you're breeding to the hitching post, place them on Wander, like so. And they will not move anywhere. They are bound to this post here and they will not move. Now you can get on them, do whatever you want, but they will stay here. So I have already bred these guys together. The way I did that was I enabled wandering on a male, a female in that case, and a male. Let them do their thing for a little while, come back, and an egg will drop from the female here, right there, kind of like that. But that's a very bad egg. Very, very bad egg. Uh, it'll look like this. Whoop. Like that, but not with poop on it. But it will be fertilized. So that's just a regular Rex egg. You cannot do anything with this other than eat it. More likely use it for kibble. Uh, yeah. If you see one of those in the wild, do not grab it. Unless you're prepared to fight angry parents. Because they will come for you. Uh, yeah. So, we had a 1, 2, 3, 4 females and a male breeding. You only need one male. Um, unless The only reason you'd use another male, either a higher level uh, or more mutations uh, or better stats. So every dino that you tame has pre-allocated stats into it randomly. Uh, there are mods to tell you, but that level 20 carby will be different from another level 20 carby. Well, definitely that one will be stronger. But this one could have 20 points into attack or whatnot. It's, uh, they're all pre-allocated. So you could tame five different turtles and have them all come out differently. Um, and that's where you really get in depth as far as getting your stats. So this one might have good attack where that one has good stamina or HP or wh whatever. So basically what you want to do is take all the good stats from all the different uh, dinos in that species line together to make the greatest of that species. Uh, now along with that, that's one way to get a better dino through breeding. Second way kind of happens just while breeding. Uh, mutations. So there's different mutations. There's color mutations, which I don't have any color mutations to show you yet. I'm sure I will get them with the amount of breeding I'll be doing. Kind of rare. This started with three 
rexes. So I had three rexes breeding, 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 and now I have this many rexes. Uh, and no mutations yet, which is odd, but it is what it is. Uh, now, as you saw back up here, boom, I got no more mutations either. So mutation, I can get color mutations where a different region of the dino will have a special color. This could be a completely blue T-Rex or a red T-Rex or whatever. Uh, different regions, it could have a red face or a blue tail or something. And that's another part of it where basically you can breed together different mutations, color mutations, to create your own personalized dino as far as color. So that's one form of mutation. Different, another one would be stat mutation. All these, so 9,460, that is uh, the highest HP T-Rex that I have has that stat. And 325 melee damage. Uh, if I was to get a attack mutation, melee damage mutation, this could end up being 330 or 340 or whatever. Um, I believe there's a certain value, uh, max mutation uh, value that you get. Um, I would have to look that up myself, but um, that's again more intricate. Uh, so basically, we hatched out all these dinos. These are triplets. Um, they all have the same stats, they're identical, they're all 241, they all have the same stats. Uh, all the rest of these three here were individual three eggs. So one egg, two, three, four eggs total. Uh, four eggs and six dinos, six rexes. That's uh, amazing. We have a lot more breeding stock now. We have, uh, I believe, three more females to breed with, which is wonderful. It's going to double our output. We're going to keep breeding until we get mutations. Now, I'm not going to go into the, all that on this episode, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys a general idea on how this works. Uh, once the egg is hatched, whoop, I have a lot of RG and pterodon eggs that I still have to hatch. I am going to do here one for you to give you an idea. Close this just in case something sneaks in and wants to kill me. More likely my dino. I'll give it the business. <clears throat> You're going to have to each egg has a specific temperature that it needs to be at to incubate. So, uh, usually the smaller dinos are a little bit more, yeah, they're easier. They have, uh, usually ambient temperature of a normal biome is going to be fine. Tear it on eggs, you can pl place it pretty much anywhere. It's going to hatch. Uh, but things like rexes, they need it to be a little hotter. Uh, gigas need it to be very hot. Uh, so you need to place... Uh, you, you regulate the temperature by fires, standing torches, uh, campfires, whatever, uh, and AC units, uh, air conditioning. So, uh, to get it to the temperature, uh, incubating temperature for that specific dyno, I don't have to worry about that on this server. Um, this is my own server, uh, the OBZ PVE server. Um, it is an open server, so you guys are more than welcome to join me here. Um, but I am a very busy person, I don't have time to wait uh, for all these little specifics for the fire for the for the AC which is not it's honestly not that hard but uh, the rates are the most important thing I've increased the rates a lot more as you can see here uh, this guy's been going for maybe about 20-30 mm, minutes and uh, it already wants its first imprint and it's already you know 40 percent done which that's great you know uh, I, st I still wanted it to be a challenge as far as timing uh, not so instantaneous where I can breed something, have it mature in like 10 seconds, and I'm good to go. I wanted it to still be a little bit of a time sink, but definitely worth it. Because um, you can get some crazy dinos, and it's, I think it's just fun. And baby dinos are oh so cute. Maybe not this one here, but <laughs> eh, I guess you are. Uh, the smaller ones when they hatch are amazing. Very cute. So, once I have this at one, one out of a hundred uh, egg incubation that was done by the uh, hatchery that I have over there, it incubates, it picks them up, incubates them to one, 
and are, and it's ready for you to drop and hatch immediately. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy down here. It's going to hatch because I have the egg incubator on, which regulates the temperature to whatever it wants to be, and hatches it. So here we go. Drop that down there. Ooh, look at that. Triplets again. No way. So you do have a percentage chance to get twins and triplets. I've gotten two triplets in one night. That is fun. So they come in wandering mode already. I basically pressed E on them to claim them. Turned them all off of wandering so they're not wandering anymore. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. I am so sorry, little fella. Are you okay? Are you? Okay. You'll survive. I'm sure you will. You can see that there's already food on them. Uh, you will need to place food in their inventory right away. They have very low carry weight. And you can see here the weight is 273. That seems excessively high. I think, oh, that's because I have increased weight um, on the server uh, because I want to. <laughs> Uh, so it, if you hatch yours on a primitive uh, on a uh, vanilla server, that's going to be like 10 or 8 or something. So you can put like 5, 6 pieces of meat on there. And that's all it can carry. It will gradually increase up to its uh, normal amount. But all the, say, all the basic things that I'm telling you are going to be for both vanilla and for highly modded. As far as breeding, I believe that's the most highly modded thing you can really get are the incubators, uh, kibble table, which is amazing for imprinting. Uh, not all people have a 100% uh, active, uh, a thorough uh, egg hatchery that involves having three, four, five, every single egg laying dino uh, or creature to make kibble with, which is, that's a whole different thing. I'll get into that later, but... So, like, for example, he wants a cuddle. It's been, uh, well, every 20, 30 minutes, the dino is going to want some attention of some sort. It could be cuddling, like so. I just have to press E on it, and, well, 32%. That'll be different from what you do, because my rates are different. Cuddle, cuddle, wow. This guy wants to go on a walk, okay? So those are the two things that people are mostly looking for hoping for when they breed is a good cuddle because it's free a good walk because it's free wow these are all hugs and uh, walks can I get by excuse me people are oh yes people are gonna ask I know they are why I have this open patch of grass here that is because when you hatch a large creature or any creature onto a foundation here you know, it's fine at first. They sit on top of the foundation. They're fine. Now, if you leave the, leave the area, come back later to check on your dino, it's going to be sunken into the foundation sometimes. And in order to move him, he'll get stuck here. In order to move him, you'll have to basically remove all the foundations he's stuck on and then get him out. And then hopefully you don't have anything on top. Because if I have to remove this foundation here, bye-bye kibble table. If you have this, you know, in that case, it wouldn't be so terrible, but... If you had to do it where you had all your crafting stuff, for some reason you have a small base, you have to hatch your dino right next to your smithy and your this and that, you're going to have to pull up everything just to get him out of there. And it is a nightmare. And, you know, I don't want to spend another half an hour getting everything unlodged. Anyways. These are all... No kibble. Okay, so this is a breeder's dream here. All walking and cuddling. Majority of them cuddling, which is outrageous. Uh, but it is what it is. Everything's going good. This message here would show Rex would like dodo kibble, where you would, if you have them, go to your refrigerator, go to your cooking pot, whatever. You'd have to have dodo eggs. You'd have to have the whole song and dance. Uh, you can look up kibble recipes uh, on your own there. Uh, and then feed it to them. It only takes one. It's not a lot. But I don't know about you, but I don't have a dodo farm. Not that it's hard to do, but how about something more crazy like a, uh, a Therizino kibble or uh, Titan Boa. You know, you don't, I, I, I don't personally have those uh, lying around. So, uh, yeah, that's why we have the kibble table. It could be anything 
and in order to imprint on them you need that now imprinting what that means is so this guy imprinted once 32 percent uh, when it's at 100 percent imprint that's 20 percent increased stats to your dino uh, for you when when uh for your, for your dino uh, if it's at 100 percent so now if it's at 50 percent it's going to be 15 percent in increase of the stats if it's only like i said halfway imprinted at 50 percent that means it's only 15 percent increased stats so that's how that goes uh, so i'm going to bring you back when these little guys want a little bit of attention here and i'll get into some other stuff as well and be right back all right guys so they are done uh, maturing uh they are full t-rexes now got them all lined up here uh the one thing i did want to mention to uh something i've kind of learned uh in order to increase the levels you need mutations for stats uh so eventually these you know i have a 238 241 they'll start increasing 250 etc um as I get mutations. Uh, if I do not get mutations, I'm basically just making a copy of one of the parents. Uh, they could mix stats up a little bit, but essentially that's what I'm doing. Uh, with this here, uh, well, I wanted to also no notate. You notice how I changed the names uh, to tell me what they are. You know, this was a 238 female that has 65 imprinting. I've seen many different uh, variations of that. And, Whatever's intuitive to you, I would definitely suggest uh, uh, naming them what they are. If, if your intention is for breeding, now there are some others that uh, I don't do that. Obviously, I have Stella here. I have all my other uh, Flare. These are my personal dinos that I use uh, to get around. They're imprinted to myself. I don't plan on breeding them, although I can. Uh, I just I know that Flare is a high-level Argentavis. Uh, most of the babies in there are of Flare and of uh, Stella. Uh, the, they're very similar, they're just statted differently. Stella's my travel dino, a little faster, as you can see, I mean, she's very fast. Um, very fast, obviously, uh, increased uh, speed, and she's also imprinted uh, fairly well, 55%, I mean, not great, but uh, she gets the job done, and uh, Flare, 55 as well. Um, so, anyways, I just, two different, this one's, uh, I believe, weight. Uh, I think Stella, Stella's weight and travel, and, just more attack and a little bit more HP, I think. Um, that little Petrie, he's a little older. He, uh, yeah, I don't really use him too much anymore. He's not terrible. I mean, oh, yeah. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was going to say he's not terribly fast, but he is terribly fast. Uh, very cool to get around for scouting. Although, I use the RGs more often for their versatility. 81% uh, imprint, so. Very nice. This is what I initially, obviously, with the attack there being fairly high and decently high HP for a pterodon. Um, use him to kill alphas every now and then before I got. Uh, let's see here. Oop. Uh, that's not my dino. That's uh, someone else's there. Shadow. 65, 62% uh, imprint uh, Sabertooth. Um, I use him to kill alphas and things like that. Uh, usually to go out farming. Um, I, I like to use land dinos a lot more. I, I feel it's uh, a lot more immersive as far as um, you get to see the land. You, you pick up on things that you normally wouldn't um, in air. Obviously, if I'm just traveling from point A to point B, I'll use the fastest route in between, which is an RG or you know, pterodon and whatnot. But if I'm looking to find things and uh, scout around, it's usually on a land dino. Um, Sabertooth, the way it controls is very nice. It, it traverses terrain very well. Um, it doesn't take too much fall damage. It's got a little jump to get around. Uh, just very, very versatile. Uh, and he does a decent amount of damage as well. Um, let's see here. Oh, I hit him. Boom. So, I mean, he's don't have to worry about uh, him dying. Uh, and he's also small. He can fit into caves. Uh, very useful in that sense. Um, grab this crate while I'm here. 
Ooh, that's terrible. Take that and drop that. Anyways, uh, I digress, I guess. Uh, went a little off topic there. Anyways, that's just uh, kind of a way to uh, keep track of your dinos uh, better, especially like I said for breeding purposes, um, to name them appropriately. So I don't have to go into each inventory and find out what they are. Um, if they're not imprinted, I won't uh, put their names out of their imprint value on there, so I know they're just not imprinted. Uh, although, I think I missed a few, because I believe, yeah, 65 imprint, I should put that on there. Uh, helps me keep track, anyways. So, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. I have five new uh, Battle Rexes and more breeding stock. Um, I will put out some more videos about uh, breeding as well. Uh, obviously, I have a lot of Argentavis. Uh, and Pteranodon um, to breed up uh, and we, hopefully I'm going to get some mutations going. I'm going to do another couple of rounds uh, off film but uh, we are going to get an army here and again the main goal for my series here is to uh, basically beat the bosses. Uh, I do have someone else that does play on the server with me um, I haven't done every single boss at every single difficulty. I've done each one on hard, um, on a modded uh, PvP server, um, increased rates, but the dino values were pretty, uh, dino levels were pretty, uh, more torn, toned down than this. Um, they're more vanilla-ish. So uh, I do have experience uh, as far as that goes, so I know what I'm getting into. Um, whether I can do it by myself or with some other person, that's another story. But anyways, thank you for tuning in, and uh, I will have some more videos coming out later with uh, things that go on on the server. Thank you very much. If you did like the video, at any point, if anything was informative, hit the like button for me, please. Thank you very much. Bye.